we have moved quickly. We've been talking about the fact that this all came together in about a month, and there's already been over 600 ventilators produced. So again, we couldn't be so proud. And I have to tell you, I was just telling the Vice President that in my 40 years at General Motors, this is one of the proudest moments of my career. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the Vice President. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Mary Barra, the Chairman and CEO of General Motors, and Chris uh, Kaipol, CEO of uh, Ventec Life Systems. It is an honor for us to be here today, um, to be among heroes in the Hoosier State who are saving lives all across America. We are so proud of each and every one of you. We truly are. It's amazing to think that this uh, floor was empty, Mary, about a month ago. And uh, General Motors, Ventec, at the urging of, uh, of the federal government, in full cooperation with the state of Indiana, put together a partnership. And it was a partnership to meet a vital need for Americans struggling in the midst of the coronavirus epidemic. I've said to several of you as I've walked through that from the moment a few months ago when the president tapped me to lead the White House Coronavirus Task Force, we had one mission, and that was to save lives. And early on, we issued guidelines. It would be 45 days ago, guidelines for every American that people across this state and across this nation have embraced. It's made an incredible difference. And that was about protecting yourself, your family, but also ensuring that our health care system would not be overwhelmed. And the second piece of ensuring that need was what you all are doing here. Ventilators play such a critical role in respiratory illness. And one of the, one of the things that we had learned from around the world where the coronavirus had impacted and claimed lives was it was more often than not the lack of a ventilator for someone that caused someone to succumb and to pass to this difficult disease. And so we, we set out the partnership with General Motors and Ventec. We set out with a partnership with, with General Electric and Ford. But I must tell you, standing here in the Hoosier State, being among people who put together this plant in 17 days and produced the first ventilator in three days and in less than a month have produced 600 ventilators for the American people, I couldn't be more inspired. And the president wanted me to be here, and I wanted to be here today with the governor of Indiana, with the leadership of these great companies, just to say thank you, not just as your vice president, but as a, as a fellow Hoosier. I know I'm in Howard County, but, and I'm a Bartholomew County guy. But I just got to tell you, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of the, all the volunteers here that are making this incredible partnership happen. I talked to a former Marine who's working the line here, and he, he told me that uh, not since he was in the Marine Corps did he feel quite as much a part of a mission. And you all are part of our nation's mission. Uh, it's a mission to make sure that every American is struggling with the coronavirus has the same level of health care and treatment that we would want for any member of our family. And make no mistake about it, you all have played a critical role in, in ensuring the fact that as of today, no American who has required a ventilator has been denied a ventilator anywhere in the United States. So to the uh, more than 800 General Motors employees, to the 25 members of the Ventec team, on behalf of your president, on behalf of our entire delegation, on behalf of a grateful nation, I just want to say thank you. We're seeing encouraging signs. You're seeing it in the news. Good progress here in Indiana, good progress across the state. We're seeing uh, cases leveling off, in some cases going down. Even in some of our hot spots of New York and New Jersey, New Orleans, Detroit, we're seeing a reduction in hospitalization and emergency room admissions. But uh, we have a ways to go, uh, but we're going to get through this. And when we get through this, make no mistake about it, that the incredible GM Ventec team will have played a vital role in ensuring that the American people had the resources and the health care and the support they needed to see themselves and their families through. 
So, uh, men and women of this great company, let me thank you again. It is great to be back home again, but it's a special joy to be here to pay a debt of gratitude to each and every one of you. I've said it many times at the podium at the White House. I'll say it again. We're going to get through this. The day will come when we put this coronavirus epidemic in the past. We're going to save lives every day between now and that great day. And each and every one of you will have played a vital role in ensuring that that happens on an increasing basis. So thank you so much for your work. God bless you all. And um, just know that we'll get through this. We'll get through this together with your hard work and God's grace. Thanks, everybody. Keep up the great work. I believe we have everyone here, so uh, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. It is truly my honor to welcome the Vice President of the United States, uh, Mike Pence, and the Honorable Elaine Chow, the Secretary of Transportation, also Rear Admiral Polachek, and uh, who is uh, uh, with us and playing an important role uh, from a logistics and managing the crisis. Also director of OMB, Russell Vogt. So thank you all for being here. We also have uh, Dr. Navarro, um, who's been instrumental in helping make this happen, and Chief of Staff Mark Short. As I mentioned, we are incredibly proud of the spirit of teamwork between General Motors and Ventec and what we've been able to accomplish in just one month. But the, the secret ingredient of this is the dedication of the people, of the Ventec team, of the GM team, of the team in Kokomo, because they have worked tirelessly day and night, um, and many times, you know, 16, 18, 20 hours a day to make this happen on the short time frame. So we are incredibly proud of ev what everyone has accomplished. And every employee here is very motivated. And we don't have time for every employee to share a story, but we do have four special employees George Vandermeyer, Michael Lee Lynch, Eric Cottrell, and Andy Chapman, who is from Ventec, that will be sharing, um, sharing some of their stories. But before we get to hear from them, it's very important that we get to um, listen to the leadership, those who are on the front lines fighting the crisis. So I'd like to first uh, turn it over to Mr. Vice President. Well, uh, thank you, Mary, and uh, thank you for the extraordinary uh, leadership you provided at General Motors and the partnership with Ventec Life Systems. Uh, has truly been historic um, and has set a whole new standard uh, for standing up manufacturing in the midst of a national emergency. I want to commend you. Uh, thank you for the hospitality today. It was such an inspiration to be among your team. Uh, and uh, Chris Kippel, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the great work that Ventec Life Systems has done, collaborating with GM, collaborating with the federal government to bring all of this about. Um, it is striking for me uh, to think, uh, as the posters around us say, not only is this one team with one mission, but it was done in one month. Um, it is extraordinary. I was, uh, I, from the time I, I became uh, the lead uh, on the White House Coronavirus Task Force, uh, we, had, we had one mission, and that was to save lives, to work with uh, every aspect of the federal government, uh, from uh, Secretary Chow to uh, the Director of Office of Management and Budget. And we stood up FEMA in the lead, and uh, uh, Admiral John Polovchek has, uh, uh, has been coordinating the distribution of, uh, of medical equipment and supplies from around the world, around the country, uh, at the point of a need. Um, but to see the way uh, this team has responded here in such a short period of time, uh, I know is an inspiration to everybody on our team. Um, it was, uh, I had to check the dates again, it was, it was just a month ago uh, that at President Trump's direction we, uh, we worked with GM and Ventec, giving you the authority under the Defense Production Act to identify resources and supply. You stood up uh, this uh, plant in 17 days. Uh, three days after that you produced, produced your first ventilator. Uh, and I just confirmed by the guy at the end of the line uh, that uh, as of uh, this week, you'll have 600 ventilators out in the American healthcare system, uh, literally at the point of the need in the midst of the coronavirus epidemic. That's an enormous American contribution. And on behalf of President Trump, on behalf of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, uh, Mary, Chris, and, and all these incredible members of your team, I just want to say thank you. 
uh, thank you for what you're doing here. Uh, I know that uh, it will be a busy summer as you continue to scale this operation. Uh, but um, I, I think for the president and for me, one of our proudest accomplishments is as we sit here today, no one in America who has required a ventilator has been denied a ventilator. That is an amazing national accomplishment. And uh, these companies and this great team here in Kokomo have been a critical part of, of making that happen. And on an ongoing basis, you'll continue to do that. We're seeing promising signs uh, in this epidemic. Uh, I just mentioned, uh, I just mentioned on the production floor that we're we're literally witnessing stabilization in many of the major outbreak areas. Uh, Ventec, I know, calls uh, Washington State home, and uh, the numbers in California and in Washington State, where this all began for us as a nation, continue to be low and steady. But we're even seeing a decline of uh, hospitalization, emergency room admissions in places like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, New Orleans, and Detroit. And we're beginning to see a progress in Chicago, where some of your very first mm -hmm. ventilators were delivered to the Chicago area and to Gary. Uh, so we're making progress uh, as a nation. But um, uh, I just uh, I just want you all to know it gives the American people and, and those of us who, uh, who serve them great, great peace of mind uh, to see the way uh, that we have brought not just the whole of government to bear on this epidemic, but the whole of America to bear. Mm -hmm. And the ingenuity, the creativity, the hard work reflected in these hallways is a testament to each and every one of you. Um, and on behalf of the President and on behalf of uh, our team at the federal level, on behalf of the Grateful Nation. Thank you. And with that, I'd be happy to recognize a member of our cabinet, uh, the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Elaine Chow. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you so much for allowing me to tag along here, because it has been so inspiring to see this factory respond in this very unprecedented times. What I saw on the factory line, along with the Vice President, was nothing short of impressive. I see this whole factory respond to help the country during the COVID-19 crisis. And the versatility, the ingenuity, the innovation, the can-do attitude on the part of the people that I saw on the line was, again, truly, truly impressive and truly American. But the President has conveyed a whole-of-government approach to combat this virus. And we at the Department of Transportation are proud to join this effort. And, and we, we are, are doing everything we can to support you, the American people, in saving lives. Now, the life-saving equipment that you manufacture will travel to FEMA primarily by road and trucks. So the department has provided emergency and regulatory relief to truckers and motor carrier industry to make sure that our supply lines remain open and strong. And so this includes issuing the first ever National Emergency Declaration providing hours of service relief for those transporting essential medical equipment. Two, granting critical waivers for commercial driver's licenses and permits so that truckers can continue to, to deliver, deliver their essential cargos. cargos. And, and then we've been working with the states as well to keep our nation's rest areas in individual states and truck parking spots open to provide a safe place for truckers to rest. And we've also been coordinating efforts to distribute a million masks to truck drivers around the country, including distribution points Mr. Vice, Vice President, President, near Indianapolis, Indianapolis which, which I'm sure, sure you'll be happy to hear. So, so the Department of Transportation is working 24-7 for the American people. God bless you and what you do to help our country in its hour of need. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And next, uh, Director of Office of Management and Budget, Budget Russell, uh, Russell Vogt, will be making a few remarks. Thanks. It's a privilege to be here. 
Uh, one of the things that the President, the Vice President has said from the very beginning of this is that we will never lack for resources to be able to fight this the way that we need to fight it. Uh, this is, this is uh, mobilizing to, to combat in a way that you'd mobilize for a war. Uh, and we've, we've been working along those lines. So it's a privilege uh, to be able to see the, the byproduct of that work. Uh, I remember being at FEMA weeks ago and seeing the needs, uh, the requests coming in from the various states about ventilators and other supplies that Admiral P has been so uh, vital in, in, in getting to these localities. Uh, and to be able to see on the, on the other end of those weeks of hard work the way the American people have uh, risen up the way the manufacturing sector has come to the table with ingenuity, creativity to be able to meet that need uh, is incredibly inspiring and it's a privilege to be here. So thank you. Next we'd like to hear from Rear Admiral John Polachek. Thank you, uh, Ms. Barr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President, Secretary Chow. Um, uh, wonderful tool, uh, tour today, seeing the front line, your front line, your pointing end of the spear for me. Um, producing uh, ventilators that uh, a month ago you were not doing. Um, although we saw those frontline troops today with the power, the real power of General Motors that was brought here was your supply chain. Uh, who are those countless logisticians that are behind the scenes or not up on that showroom floor today? They may have been, right? But they, uh, the power of your team, your engineers, uh, Ventex engineers, Right. All, All of those people that came together to do something in less than a month, the power of your uh, of uh, General Motors and, and the leadership of this team uh, to bring together uh, and knock down what was probably immense barriers to, to uh, produce parts that you weren't producing parts. You literally make you made things fall out of the sky to, to be able to get to where are you today. And I am very proud to be here. I am very proud to have been uh, working with your teams. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the support. And Mary, if, if I may, uh, Peter Mavaro has uh, been a critical part of uh, our efforts to identify and spin up resources. I know that he uh, uh, he worked closely with Ventec early on, and uh, I brought him out on Air Force Two just so he could see some of his good work uh, up close and personal. Peter, you have a few thoughts? Yeah, a few thoughts. Um, it's such an honor to be here um, with the Vice President and the huge crews of state. They used to call James Brown, I remember, is the hardest working man in show business. Um, this vice president under the task force has really been the hardest working man I've seen since he took over the reins and, and really has attacked this problem. So I, I really salute you, sir. And I want to also uh, salute the, the Ventec GM team. Um, I, I officially issued the challenge at the beginning of this. I'll afford Ferrari. It's like, who could get the ventilator first to the finish line? <laughs> Or GE, uh, or or uh, GM Ventec, and I want to officially award you a winner of the challenge today. <laughs> really just to show that. But the magic sauce here to understand, and what gives us such great hope for America as we move through this and to a stronger future beyond is the marriage of this this great entrepreneur Chris Hypo and his company, entrepreneur technology with the genius of engineering and scalability of GM under Mary Garter's leadership. And, and what, what they were able to do, to understand how this worked, what they were able to do at GM is secure the supply chain 70 years deep in, in Trump Pence time, which is to say as quickly as human possible. No one will ever do this faster than they did. And it's also testimony to Admiral Polovchev's leadership, too, because he was the person behind all this, working with the task force to make sure that Chris and Mary got what they want. So there's a, there's a beautiful historical story here which should give us hope for America, and I'm just so honored to be here with everybody. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Chris Keipel, who is the CEO of EdTech. It seems just like a few days ago I was getting phone calls from respiratory therapists and people in hospitals. Uh, the tone of their voice, you can't forget. Uh, it was sheer panic in terms of how do we get access to medical supplies, how do we save lives. It's amazing what we have accomplished here today and 
and, and why we're here, it's, it's really because of great people. people. And, and it starts with policy and the Washington level, level with Vice President Pence, Dr. Navarro, and Admiral Polochek's teams. I, I was on the phone with, with many members of the government from 5 a.m. in the morning till 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the evening, working around the clock with the Admiral and Dr. Navarro to think through how do we solve these problems? How do we help with policy? And from the first phone call with Mary and her team, she jumped into this not with all the answers, but because it was the right thing to do and because we knew that together we could solve these problems. And it's been amazing to me to partner American innovation with American manufacturing and manufacturing knowledge and know-how and put those things together to think about solving problems on a global scale with Americans and American innovation and American might. And it's been a privilege for me to work with General Motors. It's been a privilege for me to see American manufacturing know-how and talent. We are making a better medical device today because of the manufacturing know-how and the scalability that General Motors has brought to the table. And we are able to solve supply chain problems unlike other companies in the world today because of this partnership. And I think it's been amazing to see how all these people have come together with one mission, with one mission to do the right thing, with one mission to try to save somebody's life. And it's been a privilege to work with every single person at this table and every single person in this room. And I think today is really recognizing the people who made this possible. It's the people at this table who have sacrificed their lives, risked their lives to come out here to separate themselves and their family to make ventilators so that most importantly, people on the front line, the respiratory therapists, the doctors, the families who have somebody sick from COVID-19 don't have to be faced with the question, will I have access to medical resources? Will I have access to a ventilator? I think what we are doing today is solving those problems. And it's really encouraging to me as an American to know that we have a General Motors in America, that we have federal policy that can solve problems to bring us together. And when America wants to solve a problem, we will work together to solve a problem. And so I want to recognize some of the people at this table for what they've done. And we'll start with George. George has come out of retirement to work on this project. And I think George's story is so indicative of so many people here. He's worked tirelessly because he felt like it was the right thing to do. And George, tell your story. I think it's incredible. Can people step back from him to give him his six feet, please? Yeah, please. Um, well, I've been working for General Motors for 43 years. Um, never quite seen anything like this. Um, got a call and asked if I was willing to uh, come out and help on this project. And I was supposed to retire like two or three weeks ago. And so I've just delayed the retirement to, to help with this project. And to a lot of people's point, it is absolutely amazing what our companies have done. I mean, people work tirelessly. I see people when I'm coming in in the morning still leaving from the next day, as Mary had mentioned. People just, nothing gets in the way. We move roadblocks, any little roadblock gets in the way, we just move along, we move along, we move along. And I have never seen anything like it in my life, and I've been very proud to be part of it, proud to be part of the General Motors and the Ventec team, because uh, this is just, I've never been in a world war, but that's kind of how I feel. I feel like it's just, you know, wartime, and we come together, and we did something that was unprecedented, that I'm sure people did not believe we could do. And it's just been absolutely amazing, incredible, incredible people. I just say thanks. I'm, I'm glad I'm part of it. Wow. Wow. Great words. Thanks, George. Thank you. George, what was the hardest, what hardest thing? thing? What was the hardest thing? Well, I used to, I, I'm, used, I'm the quality manager in the Marion Metal Center, and I make sheet metal. And the first assignment I got here was to become a subject matter expert on the uh, oxygen accumulator. And there's these little parts that I'm trying to teach people how to put together that, that screws about what you have in your glasses. And I'm trying to put them in there and struggling with, and then you got to torque them down just right. But uh, 
just, just being able, just, just, going just going through this and learning the process. process. But, but it was very well detailed. detailed. I mean, it was very well detailed what we had to do. And very good standardized processes to follow. And then we took our General Motors talent from that and, and we, you know, Chris's point, point, we made them better. And, you know, we just continue making better every single day. We're making this process better. Um, but just getting to know a ventilator from sheet metal was, was a bit difficult. <laughs> well, you did well. Thank you, George. Great job, George. Great job. Andy Chapman is on the Ventec Life Systems team. Uh, he's part of the team who helped create Boxen. Uh, Andy was there when I uh, came around the corner and said, we're going to go from making a couple hundred to tens of thousands. Uh, Andy, how's your experience been? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say that it's been uh, a really great experience to be here so far. Um, I didn't quite know what I was getting into right when this whole thing started. Uh, but I can look back on it and say that it's definitely something that I'll remember for the rest of my life, and uh, I'm proud to be here, for sure. Um, you know, when I first joined uh, Ventec five years ago, I was drawn in by the complexity of Voxen. Uh, I knew that it was going to be a really good engineering challenge, uh, just for, you know, the traditional quantities that we were going to be talking about. Uh, you know, when, when that challenge turned into making 30,000 ventilators, then uh, I was... I was kind of blown away and how we were going to be able to do that because uh, from a supply chain perspective mostly, uh, you have to understand it's set up for a certain number, uh, you know, for, for how the respiratory care industry is structured. Uh, and now all of a sudden we don't have just, you know, national competition for these resources, there's global competition and we need to make sure that we can get those resources to build finished medical devices. Um, and so I really questioned how we were going to be able to do that, but as soon as I started working with the GM team, um, I noticed that there were, there, there were two things that were really essential to making this go. Uh, one of them is that you're dealing with people that, uh, that are they're very intelligent, uh, and that was very apparent from the start that uh, these people had the intelligence to, uh, to make this thing go. The other thing, uh, and I think that something we evaluate very carefully at Ventec is to make sure that people really care about the device that they're making. Uh, you know, it really does make a difference at the end of the day. It's the kind of thing that, you know, when I got here, I came in at 6 in the morning and I didn't leave until 3.30 in the morning. Uh, you don't do that kind of a thing if you don't care about the things that you're doing. Um, so just seeing that uh, all of the GM team has been so accepting of this product and has gotten behind it so quickly, I think is a really key thing that uh, needs to be recognized and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Andy, how, just your experience of manufacturing, how would you look at American manufacturing differently after this experience? You know, I really had no idea going in. I think the first time that I even went into to Building 6, um, I was blown away just by the sheer size of, of uh, the process and, and how many employees were here and and when I walked in to the upstairs uh, manufacturing area the very first time uh, it was an incredible sight to see our traditional traditional manufacturing layout multiplied just over and over and over again you walk in I'm used to going out in the manufacturing floor and seeing just one one metering valve press but uh, there we see you know 15 of them all lined up in a row and all the test systems going, and uh, it's, it's just incredible. Great. Thank you, Andy. Very impressive. Very impressive. Micheline has been with General Motors for years, and your family has been with part of the General Motors family, and you came back to help make ventilators. Tell us about your story. Yes. Um, I'm a 14-year employee. Um, on indefinite layoff in January. Um, not sure if I was going to come back. Um, hoped I would, but then following the COVID-19, I seen things were getting really bad, and then I began to hear rumors of Ventec ventilators being made. Then again in Kokomo, and I'm thinking, surely not at our plant. And then somebody from work called me and said, hey, they're working on the ERC building. You think, you think you'll get, get called, called back, back to work? work. And, and I said, I hope so. And I got a call in April and came back. I've been here. I was the first wave of people to come in. Um, it's been very inspiring to me that we have moved as quickly as we have. Um, like you said, it's taken a lot of ingenuity, a lot of hard work. Um, 
I put parts together, I'm part of it, but there has been so many people, you know, behind the scenes that have just ran with this, and I'm just very proud to be a part of this and to be helping, and so I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. Great job, Nicolene. Thank you, too. Where's home? Kokomo? No, I live in Peru. Okay. Yep. Good. Just up the road. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Great job. Nicolene, you didn't have to come back to work. No. Do you want to talk a little bit about that experience? Um, well, again, it's one of those things where um, losing your job, you're a little frustrated to begin with. Um, I like what I was doing when I left my job. So the first thing you're thinking is, I would really like to come back to work. So when you get this call, you're thinking, I, I really want to come back and, and be a part of this. So. Um, to, to me, it was, was a no-brainer. No I mean, it was like, I'm, I'm coming back, I'm going to help, do whatever I can, and it was, to me, it was just an easy answer. I'll, I'll be back, you know. And I, like I said before, I haven't really been real frightened coming in here. I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're coming back to work with all this going on. But they have done such a good job taking care of us with our mask and, you know, our temperature, and the housekeeping's been wonderful, making sure everything's clean and sanitized. And I just, I just come into work, and I'm, I'm just glad to be here. Mm. Thank you for your time. Super, Super job. job. Super job. I think one of the great things is you, you brought some people from Ventec. You brought some people like George, who have been with General Motors for decades. And we've also added people like Aaron, uh, who are newer to the General Motors family. But tell us a little bit about your experience and everything you've done. Well, I'm not new to General Motors. I've been a 21-year employee, actually. So, And my husband works here, too. He's got 20 years in, and he's one of the skilled trades um, team that came in day one, started moving everything out of this building, bringing in the new. He kept coming home saying, you would just not believe what is happening. I mean, everything is just moving so quickly. And so then the next week when I got the call, and said, do you want to come back? I said, of course I do. We were just temporarily laid off because of the COVID. So when I had the opportunity to come in, I said, yes, I want to be a part of this. So um, I jumped in. I'm part of the training that's been going on. Um, a lot of changes, but everyone has just been working together, making things happen, you know, kind of getting out of their comfort zones and just really diving in and getting things done. And it's just been amazing to see the transformation in just such a short amount of time. But this building was was not used, and now look at it. It's just booming every day. And we get more and more employees, and everyone's just so excited about helping, making, you know, we're you're used to making cars, and you're always, you know, you're always thinking, if my parent was going to drive this car or my son or my daughter, I would want it to be perfect. And that's exactly the attitude that everybody's going in for the, on this project. You know, we want these ventilators to get out to the people that could be our parents, could be our children, could be our neighbor. You know, we, you think about that when you're in the manufacturing. You want to make sure that, that um, you know, you're putting your all and you're giving your best effort every single day. And I think that's... It's just, just what it's like being in General Motors. I mean, you just always put your best foot forward. Yeah. It's a good marriage of, between the two. You need, you need to hang on to that couple. I think so. <laughs> Very impressive. Good words. Really, really inspiring words. And I, the, the spirit that I sensed walking on the floor, um, you know, I've heard again here is, I, I think, Everybody understood the urgency uh, and the importance of what we were doing and moved out on it so quickly. And I, I think it, I, it, it's got to be some kind of a record in the history of American manufacturing. I, I, I don't know of a time that a product with this type of complexity was starting up uh, over 50 percent of the, the supply base uh, being new to do it so quickly and to get the facility ready. And it, it just speaks to the 
hundreds and probably thousands of people, not only the hundreds of people that are here, but the thousands of people, to your point, in the supply base in all parts of every single part of General Motors came together to partner with the uh, the Ventec team to get this done. So I, I'm humbled and proud to be a part of it, and I'm so proud of the General Motors team and the partnership with Ventec. Well, let me let me thank you, Mary. I'll, I'll give you the last word here for Chris, but Chris Keipel, thank you. It's great to meet you finally. Uh, your reputation preceded you, um, and uh, I couldn't be more impressed with the Ventec team. And Proud to have you in my home state of Indiana for every bit as long as you want to stay. Proud to be in Kokomo. And uh, Mary, thank you for uh, bringing the, the uh, tremendous weight uh, and uh, reputation of General Motors to bear on on a great national challenge. Um, when, when President Trump and you spoke uh, about this, it was, you know, he made it very clear that we weren't just going to have a whole of government approach. We needed a whole of America approach. And, uh, and for you to, to bring uh, the resources of General Motors to bear your vast supply chain around the country and around the world to meet this moment is a great uh, contribution uh, to the nation. So I want to thank both of you and, and thank these uh, incredible employees. Uh, your, your stories are inspiring. Your spirit is even more inspiring. And, um, uh, on behalf of the president and the whole country, just keep up the great work. Uh, you all are making you're making America proud here. I mean it, Mary. Mr. Vice President, you said it extremely well. So just thanks everybody. Um, just so appreciative in General Motors. Um, you know, very part, proud of our heritage of helping the country in times of need. There was never a question if we could help, we would, and this team did it. So again, couldn't be more proud. Thank you, Mary. Great job. Thank you.